Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, motivational speaker, athlete, and professor in residence at Quinnipiac University. To celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Americas with Disabilities Act, the Developmental Disabilities Special Interest Section Group of the American Occupational Therapy Association, in collaboration with Ability Media, is proud to welcome you to our very first Film Award event. We're here tonight to highlight the acceptance and inclusion of individuals with disabilities in film, as well as awareness. The impact and marginalization of negative attitude towards peoples with disabilities also affects access to opportunities and the provision of care. Movies, television, and media overall are rarely represented by the occupational portrayal of people with disabilities accurately. And 97% of movie and TV roles are played by able-bodied actors stealing those opportunities from the people with disabilities. AOTA ad advocates working with people with disabilities and occupational therapy practitioners must support and voice the need for accurate and inclusive casting. For the next hour, thanks to our friends at the American Occupational Therapy Association and my students right here at Ability Media, live from the Ed McMahon Communications Center, we will showcase some of the best films to portray disability or showcase an actor who's overcome a disability to take their place side by side with able-bodied performers. Now, unlike the Oscars, you can vote on some of our movies right here and the best awards for actors, actresses, and the favorite movie category is coming up. We'll have the results as we ask you guys to vote on that. Plus, we'll have a round table discussion about disability and media and a look at some of the TV shows, roles, and actors that the history of disability has had on the small screen. So like I said, we'll have voting right here online on Zoom here. So for the first folks in, in, out there in TV land and wherever you are watching this, here we go. No fanfare like the Oscars or Golden Awards. We're gonna start off with the best picture. I have no envelope needed right now because we're gonna take a look at the nomination for best picture. Now for the best picture, we have Peanut Butter Falcon, which stars Sheila Brof, Zach Godestagan, and Dakota Johnson. It's a hero's journey with Zach, played by Zach Godestagan, a young man with Down syndrome cast as the hero in this epic tale. Zach escapes from a state-run long-term care facility to pursue his life's dream to train as a professional wrestler. Now he finds his idol, played by a real-life professional wrestler known as Jake the Snake Roberts and his journey's epic. Zach finds allies, mentors, and people all over the country as he rises to become a big, big star in this role. This was the highest grossing independent film of the year at over 23 million. The directors were Tyler Nelson and Michael Schwartz. Now the next movie we wanna bring you about to talk about and to vote on, and again, you can vote right here on Zoom is Keep the Change, which frames the representation of having autism as a personal story of and by actors who have autism. Keep the Change is a story of choices that individuals make when navigating the world and desire for deeper relationships. David, played by Brandon Polanski, and Sarah, who's played by Samantha Ellison, meet at a social program at the Jewish Community Center. This movie is directed by Rachel Israel and Keep the Chains adds to the authentic representation of how autism is portrayed in media. The brilliance of the film supports the ongoing conversations about the merits of authentic casting and pop culture portrayals of people with disabilities. Next on our portrayal tonight is Wonder, which is directed by Stephen Chomsky and it's based on the novel by the same name. Augie, played by Jacob Tremblay, was born with Treacher Collins Syndrome, and after his 27th surgery enabling him to finally see, hear, smell, and speak, he goes from homeschool to a private school, and when school starts, Augie is ostracized by classmates, but soon forms close friendships and ends the school year, winning an award for strength and courage shown throughout the year. His prosthetic makeup took over an hour and a half to apply each day, leaving some critics to wonder if the decision to cast an actor without a condition as Augie is undermining the film's message. Next up is Crip Camp, A Disability Revolution. A winner of 2020 Sundance Film Festival Audience Award for documentary by directors Nicole Newman and Jim Lebrecht, it's the origin of a story of disability rights movement in America, an inclusive camp for the handicap and the cat skills that tells the story of intersectionality of marginalized communities who together ignite their righteous anger to catapult a decade long fight for civil rights. Crip Camp chronicles the importance of building spaces for people with disabilities to organize. And a, finally, a uh, short film provoking big emotions, Lewis 
gives insight into the educational experience of a young boy who's deaf. Lewis captures both the personal and academic challenges associated with deafness and use of a hearing aid. Misunderstandings and misconceptions on behalf of Lewis's classmates and teachers leaves him feeling disconnected from his environment, both figuratively and literally. Lewis finds the most comfort by playing with his snails and soon after has a dream that reveals an unlikely connection, sparking an opportunity for Lewis to explain his unique sensory experiences to classmates and te teachers in efforts to increase the understanding and compassion. And finally, directed by Shangali Bose, Margarita with a Straw is a 2014 Hindi in the indie language drama starring Kaliki Kochlin as an Indian teenager with cerebral palsy who relocates to America for her undergraduate education and comes of age following her complex relationship with a blind girl played by Sayana Gupta. Now we're also going to move over here and uh, get over to the uh, best actors and actresses category. So we might as go in. And again, if you're online voting right now, make sure you vote for the films that we just had. And as we start talking about these films, you can vote for the best actresses in these roles. So let's get right to it. And the best actress uh, for our first film is actress and singer Samantha Ellison as she stars in Keep the Change. She's a member of Epic Players, a un uniquely inclusive theater company company for talented performers with and without disabilities. She also performs with Dream Street Theater Company as the subject of a memoir, My Picture Perfect Family, What Happens When One Twin Has Autism, Diagnosed with Autism as a Toddler, Confronting Dire Predictions and Negative Stereotypes. Samantha started singing with Perfect Pitch at age seven and graduated Pace University cum laude. Actress, comedian, broadcaster, and inter international disability rights activist Liz Carr has used a wheelchair since the age of seven due to Aramagus multiplus congenia. She plays the cheeky Clarissa Mullery, a lab assistant in a forensic science lab with a series of silent witnesses produced by the BBC. She'll join the cast of Witcher in the show's second season. Our next actress in this category is Maysoon Zayed. She's an American actress, comedian, and activist who describes herself as a Palestinian Muslim with cerebral palsy from New Jersey. In June of 2019, she debuted in a reoccurring role of Zahar Emir in the ABC daytime soap opera General Hospital. She has presented at annual TED conferences, and her TED Talk has been viewed by over 1 billion people. Next up in our best actress category is Kaylee Coachland. She's an activist and promotes various causes ranging from health, education, and women empowerment and gender equality. In Shonal Bose's Margarita with a Straw, as we just mentioned, Coachland plays Lalila, a teenager with cerebral palsy, discovering her own sexuality, much to her conservative mother's horror. She was also the brand ambassador of the Cinema for Care section, aimed at creating awareness about disability issues at the Lights India International Film Festival. Now our next category, and again, keep voting because we want to get those results coming up right after this part. So let's go right into the best male actor. And heading up that category is Matt Fraser. He's an English rock museum musician, actor, writer, and performance artist with thalidomide, induced fecalemia. He has performed in the role of Shakespeare's Richard III at the Hull Truck Theater in 2017. And in 2019, Frazier played Raymond Van Garrett in the BBC One adaptation of Philip Pullman's fantasy trilogy, His Dark Materials. Next up in the Best Actor category is Zach Godestagen. As we mentioned, he received a standing ovation when he and his co-star Shia LaBeouf presented the best live action short film on stage at the 2020 Oscars. And that was for good reason, because Zach is the first person with Down syndrome to present at the Oscars. He's an actor known for Peanut Butter Falcon, At Last, and the soon-to-be-released movie God Save the Queens. And Steve Way is an American actor and comedian best known for his reoccurring role, Steve, a friend of the lead character Rami Hassan on the Hulu series Rami. Way was born with muscular dystrophy, and in addition to being an entertainer, he's an advocate for disability rights and universal health care for actors with disabilities in Hollywood. Way also works as a high school substitute teacher. 
And finally, for your voting pleasure, Steve Brandon is a British actor with Down syndrome. His debut as the lead in the feature film, My Heart, has garnered a great deal of accolades with the film's recognition at a number of festivals worldwide, including Cinequest in California and the Edinburgh International Film Festival in 2016. So hopefully all the votes are compiled. If you've got them in, uh, I think we're going to throw to our break here. And when we come back for that, we will have the results. So stay with us. Coming up next, we'll have our round table and take a look at some of the disabilities in film. Hi, I am here today with members of the Developmental Disability Special Interest Section of the American Occupational Therapy Association. And we wanted to take a moment to talk about why this event is so important to us. Dr. Whitney, why is authentic representation of disability in the media so important? Thank you for that question, um, Karen. The, really, the way we see and hear and feel about differently abled people, like how they're represented, can shape how people with disabilities are received in the world and ultimately shapes the public narrative. And if we don't allow individuals with disability to represent their own stories in their own voices, we're really dismissing them as unreliable narrators of their own story. And when we silence voices, we suppress their agency and we fail to authentically allow for the representation of, of disability in film and media and pop culture. And ultimately this both perpetuates and increases inequities. Dr. Walsh, how do we advocate for this accurate representation of persons with disabilities in the film and in media in general? Karen, any advocacy effort really begins by simply raising awareness around an issue with the intention of changing circumstances, context, or demands for an alternate outcome. When someone thinks about advocacy, having and actioning a support network is a critical first step. The next two would be to identify and then get in front of decision makers for any problem, cause, or population to get the outcome change that you're looking for. Those with disabilities need help of champions to raise awareness and move the needle towards increasing inclusive opportunities for representation in current media. Arguably, inclusion of individuals with disabilities into regularly viewed and contemporary media shapes public perception. It shifts society's cultural norms by incorporating diversity, equity, and access for the disabilities population. We've seen the impact of this type of inclusion, and by seeing someone like me, individuals with disabilities see opportunities that may not have existed before. What is possible is no longer constrained. Addressing the social justice issue of inclusion of persons with disabilities into mainstream media takes the effort of many. Certainly, it takes the individuals themselves in the spirit of nothing about us without us, but it also takes those who champion the cause and have the power to open doors and be change facilitators as well. An example might be a casting director or maybe an occupational therapist who can help facilitating productive engagement when an actor of differing abilities comes in front of acting demands or capacity of that role. This event is an exceptional start at raising awareness about the issue of accurate representation. Thank you for allowing the American Occupational Therapy Association and Ability Media to highlight this event and act as disability champions. Welcome back to AOTA at the Movies. I'm Dave Stevens, and we want to uh, spare no expense because the voting is in. I have the envelope, so here we go. Thanks to uh, Bobcat, Bobcat, and Bobcat, our firm that has put this together. And the winner of the best picture is Peanut Butter Falcon. Now, Peanut Butter Falcon, of course, was the movie that we uh, mentioned early with Shia LaBeouf and Zach Gonsign and Dakota Johnson. The Hero's Journey was Zach, who has Down Syndrome. So let's get next up to our lead actor. And we got another envelope here. So let's do that. And the Best Actor Award goes to, well, I just mentioned Peanut Butter Falcon, Zach Godesagan. And he can't be here, obviously, to accept this amazing award. But uh, again, a great performance by a great movie and a great actor, again, breaking through in this role, uh, showing what you can do with Down syndrome. And so last but not least in our third category for the Best Actress is... 
All right, that's it. Mansoon Zayed. And as we said earlier, uh, she was a big part of uh, uh, the movie that we had. Uh, sorry, lost my place here. Uh, she was the American actress, activist, uh, who is a Palestinian Muslim with cerebral palsy from New Jersey. So that's pretty cool. And thank you guys again for your voting. We will continue to have voting for the other categories coming up. But uh, right now, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, something that is near and dear to my heart. It's the movies that have had lead actors in roles that are played by able-bodied actors that are performing as a disabled lead. Now, this is in no order or any kind of, of uh, voting as far as top to bottom. It's just a discussion point. So let's go to some of the top movies with a lead character in a disability role. First off is uh, my favorite, Forrest Gump. By, played by Tom Hanks. Uh, you know, he had a great uh, career in this movie spanning from football and going to war and all kinds of uh, situations that uh, Tom Hanks was put in as that lead role. It was a great movie. Next up is My, Laugh, My Left Foot starring Daniel Day-Lewis. And that's also a great movie that won him an Oscar. Uh, the Miracle Worker is another one from back in the day, the story of Helen Keller, played by Patty Duke, a wonderful movie that has held up over the, the test of time. Next up is Tom Cruise, one of the greatest actors of our time, who took on the role of a disabled vet in Born on the Fourth of July. Another one from back in the day, Cher and Eric Stoltz, starring in Mask. Of course, Mask is the story of a young man who's disfigured and has to go through life with this disease. Rocky was such an inspirational real life character and of course portrayed by Eric Stoltz in the day to day life of Rocky. Next up is Ray played by Jamie Foxx, one of the best ever roles by someone who's really, really embraced the role of that actor. He looks exactly like, like Ray Charles and you gotta wanna watch that one especially since he sings in the role of Ray Charles. I Am Sam is next up, played by Sean Penn, who of course had the role as a person with a mental disability trying to keep his child and be a parent. Uh, next one might shock you a little bit is Finding Nemo 1 and 2. Of course, we know Nemo had a little fin uh, that was uh, crippled and he couldn't go and, and swim like all the other fish. And if you haven't seen that movie, get it tonight and watch it with your kids. Uh, the Upside starring Brian Cranston, who had a disability and was in a wheelchair and was taken care of by a uh, worker. Another uh, kind of a feel-good story, buddy-buddy film, and that's one is also worth a watch. A Beautiful Mind starring Russell Crowe. I don't have to tell you about that because that one is one of the legendary films. Benny and June from back in, uh, I think it was the late 80s, starring Johnny Depp, of course, dealing with uh, mental and uh, physical disabilities in that one. Uh, one from the 60s that is before a lot of our times, uh, Charlie, played by Cliff Robinson, uh, a great movie showing the struggles of a man living in the day-to-day -day world with a mental disability. Um, the Elephant Man, John Merrick, of course, played that role, which, of course, is the story of a man back in the 1800s who had his elephant disease where his body was disfigured and he tried to live a normal life, but in those days he was considered just a freak. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon is another great cartoon for kids that shows uh, 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 a dragon that has a disability, and, of course, he teams up with a young man who learns to ride that, and they take on adventures, and it's been worth, I think, three sequels, a great film for kids and families. The Horse Whispers, Scarlett Johansson from when she was really young uh, is a Robert Redford film and you really want to see that one too. It's about a woman who uh, has overcome her disability and has the ability to work with horses and animals. Uh, next up, way, way, way back is Jimmy Stewart. You might remember it from the Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. Yes, we see it at Christmas, but people don't realize that Jimmy Stewart's character is partially is deaf in one ear, which comes to play in this story. Again, one of the first early characters that had a disability and of course jimmy stewart a legendary actor in his own time uh next up is molly starring elizabeth shoe and we'll fly through the next ones uh here we have radio with Kubrick gooding jr one of my favorites is x-men starring patrick stewart in the role of the head of the guy that gets all these crazy characters who are also in their own uh, writes outcasts in society. They're kind of in our world of handicap, and uh, those have been around for many, many sequels. Um, Harrison Ford starred in Regarding Henry, where he had had a bullet in his brain that caused him to then suddenly have a disability, and that's also a great performance. And finally, you remember Rain Man, 
with Dustin Hoffman and uh, one of our uh, mentions earlier, Tom Cruise. Just a great film portraying, again, disabilities in film. So just a little look at some of those films uh, that we kind of have taken for granted and didn't realize that those were people that uh, were played by able-bodied actors. And of course, when you have able-bodied actors taking those roles, it's an, it takes away from the disabled actors. And that's why tonight we have a round table to discuss just that. We have some great members out of there, out in the world who are, have been in movies, produce movies, and also now are working with people to get them in films. So our round table is gonna be a great opportunity for you guys to take a little insight into why those of us that can't get jobs in TV and film are able to get them. And we have a great roundtable discussion. I've got some awesome guests. Two of them I want to get to right off the top. One of them is an old buddy of mine, and uh, I'm so glad he's joined me. Nate Boyer. Nate's story is amazing because he was in the Green Beret, went back to college at age 30, became a star hero, and then came back and played in the NFL with the Seattle Seahawks as a long snapper. He also makes movies and helps veterans now in his movie projects. So, Nate, thanks for taking time. And also on the screen with me is uh, Dr. Wendy Wall. She's a, she is a developmental uh, American occupational therapist specializing in uh, the special interests section. So, again, thank you for joining us. And, Nate, as we get into this discussion, we're talking about what has been the problem with people with disabilities, veterans like that not being in movies? And you have changed that by the things that you're doing. Tell us about what you're doing and why. Well, yeah, Jake, who was going to join us soon, I'm sure, uh, worked on a project with me about a year ago uh, out in, in Massachusetts. And uh, that, was, that was the first feature film that uh, I'd kind of helped put together. We had, you know, literally no budget, but half the cast and crew, if not more, uh, were veterans and we had quite a few veterans especially on camera in that project you know we went out to the middle of nowhere Massachusetts in the snow in the winter and just figured it out as we went and uh, that that movie's almost finished finally which is awesome but you know I see that throughout the work we're doing with MVP um, merging vets and players where we're bringing together combat vets and former professional athletes and help them find purpose and identity and all that uh, I see that uh, with with so many not just veterans, I would say people with adaptive, um, uh, with adaptive challenges, I should say. You know, we look at like Adaptive Training Foundation in Dallas, for instance, that's a great example. Um, sometimes we don't come back whole. Sometimes that's from a mental side of things. Sometimes that's literally limbs, you know, but we're still very capable. And I think there's enough of the community, the veteran, uh, the veteran community that gets worshiped with praise and showered with like these thank yous. And especially when you see somebody with visible scars, it's sort of a, oh, I've got sympathy for this person. When the reality is like, that's not encouragement. They need to be empowered and they need to be pushed to continue to do great things. They survived something quite challenging now that they're still here and they're still whole in so many ways. Uh, we just got to continue to push that narrative of, of that capability that we all have. And when do you you're advocate for this? You're, you're an adaptive human being. You adapted since the day you were born. That's right, Nate, and I appreciate that and our friendship. And Wendy, I want to I want to talk to you because you try to help these people when they overcome their injuries, veterans come back, all these. You're able to get them back into the real world and get them into movie roles, production roles, and all these kind of things. So absolutely. Uh, first off, as an occupational therapist, my work centers around um, helping those with um, differing abilities and developing abilities to be able to engage in occupations and activities of daily living. Everything we do is our occupations. It's not just the things that we get paid for. Um, and so as an advocate for people with differing abilities, it's really important to have advocates in your corner and occupational therapy is a, is a wonderful profession that can work with individuals that have these differing abilities. For things like um, movies and media, it's really important to create opportunities where accurate representation of those with differing abilities um, can be seen by the larger population. One of the key pieces of advocacy is to be able to articulate your issue and get behind or at the table for um, stakeholders who are decision makers and change makers. Advocates are those that help 
make change. So uh, advocating for accurate representation in media and film is a, is a wonderful link with occupational therapy. And we've seen the impact of accurate representation in things like mannequins at department stores or um, those who use wheelchairs as runway models. We're changing societal norms and addressing a social justice issue. There's about 13 million social security eligible beneficiaries who uh, are work focused yet less than 24% actually collect a paycheck. So we're creating opportunities that are allowing those with differing abilities to get out there and to be productive uh, occu occupational beings. Um, so it's a lovely opportunity to, um, to talk about this and raise awareness. Nate, you've given these opportunities to these people that have disabilities and wounds and scars internally and out. What does this mean to them to get back into the world, live their daily routine, and try to have a career or a life? No, I think, I mean, I think Wendy kind of hit it on the head, uh, or at least alluded to it, you know, this, the, the narrative. It's all about, for me, it's about the, the narrative, the story we're telling about these human beings, because, you know, PTSD, whether it's PTSD uh, or, you know, any kind of uh, injury or wound or, uh, something you have to overcome. Um, you're still a human being. We're all human beings. You know, that's a, those are human issues. They're not just veteran issues. And I think that that's one of the things I'm really trying to, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, there's a dog that's creeping on screen right now. It's hilarious. Campbell, you just wait your turn. Uh, uh, you know, th th there's, there's this pushing that narrative that like, we're all human beings. We all struggle. We all go through things. I think that helps people relate that think they can't. You know, they look at someone in, in camouflage, like someone in, in a, even a, a sports uniform, and they're just like, well, I don't know what that lifestyle is yet uh, like, excuse me, being a professional athlete or, you know, fighting for my country, going to war. Like, I could never relate to that. And maybe there's going to be certain aspects that, no, you can't, but you can definitely relate to the struggles with transition and, you know, coming back home, um, trying to fit in, feeling like all you want to do is belong, and then, you know, finding that that purpose again, something that makes you feel as alive as you felt before, you know, finding a new mission. I think everybody can relate to that. You know, we all want to belong. We all want to matter. We all want to know that uh, if I wasn't here tomorrow, uh, the world would be a worse off place. You know, we all want to feel that. And I think that that's, um, that's something that I'm really trying to push and help people understand and relate to because they'll look at somebody like Travis Mills is a great example, quadruple amputee, you know, and he's done so many great things with his life since there. And he's just got this attitude of like, I mean, what am I going to do? You know, I'm, I'm, I, I can sit here and be angry uh, or I can just continue to, to crush life and chase my dreams. I'm here. I made it back for a reason, you know, and it's just a great example for, for Americans to see that it's like, he's not waiting for people to just hand him stuff and help him out. It's like, he wants to uh, inspire others and encourage others that like anything is possible, no matter what your circumstances. Nate, you've been on the set with these people. You've seen the emotions from guys that have, you know, been in your movies and working on. I mean, what does it feel like inside for you to give them this chance? <laughs> uh, you know, it's not really me giving a giving giving them the chance. It's it's honestly like this is what Americans want to do. Like generally, I think most of us like we want to find ways to help veterans and give those opportunities. We just often don't know how, and I think. The easiest way to do that is like, what do you have access to? What are you already good at? What do you enjoy doing? I guarantee there's veterans out there that want to do those things. You know what I mean? So just include them, guide them, even if it's at a low level. I mean, most of us are willing to start in the mailroom, uh, just like everybody else. It's just feeling like we have that opportunity and feeling like, you know, people in society aren't going to look at us in a different way or like a, maybe a fearful way or intimidated way because of our background. You know, understanding that hey, we're just we're sensitive people too, just trying to figure it out and just trying to get by every day. And, you know, we just want to be happy. We want to be loved just like everybody else. So I, I think um, I, I'm not really opening a ton of doors. It's more people that have opened doors for me that I'm sharing that message of how much it mattered to me. And I really appreciate it. I think the football thing really helped. You know, it gave me a platform. It gave, got my story out there and people were like, I want to help you. And I'm like, awesome. Thank you for helping me. Like now let's help these other people who did just as much as, as me, if not more, they just didn't have the microphone or the platform I had. And they're on board for that. And they see these men and women, how hard they work and how much they care about this stuff and what they're willing to kind of put in, or I guess for lack of a better word, sacrifice to, um, to be elite in a different way. And once they see that, they're like, oh, wow. I, I knew this person was quote unquote, a, you know, a, a hero or at least someone that was willing to serve their country. 
but I just didn't think they'd be able to pick this thing up so quick and just figure it out. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think it, it, it sort of surprises people, but once they see that and they see the commitment from these uh, individuals, it's easy to want to hire them, to want to, to add them to your team. Thanks, Nate. And now I got to bring in another amazing guest for us on our round table. And uh, she doesn't need much of an introduction because I've worked with her and I'll be working with her in the future. But uh, Mindy Shire is here. She's the founder of Runway of Dreams. But the reason we brought her in is because she's also created Gamut Management, which is the opportunity for people with physical and disabilities of all types to actually have an outlet to be on TV, on camera. So Mindy, thanks for joining us. And how did you get involved with this very unique project? Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. With the creation of Runway of Dreams, which works within the fashion industry and helping with inclusion of mainstream brands and people with disabilities, suddenly other industries or other uh, brands started reaching out to Runway of Dreams to be connected to people with disabilities in everything from developing product all the way up to the entertainment industry. Delta, for example, reached out to us and said that they wanna start having people with disabilities in their in-flight videos. Can we please help them with that? And when these requests kept coming in, it became very clear to me that if they were reaching out to a nonprofit that really didn't do this for a living, uh, for a living, uh, as a core part of our business, and that must be mean that there's a hole in the market. So in 2019, we created Gamut Management, which, as you said, is a talent management company exclusively for people with disabilities. And we love what you do. And Wendy, we've already seen how important it is to get people back into those roles. So, you know, what is your job? What is the uh, occupational therapist's job to make sure that they can get out there and act and walk and do these things that regular actors can do with ease? So occupational therapists can address both the science of movement and uh, task analysis, but also the art of performing occupations or everyday activities in a way that's safe and maxim maximal. Um, so working with someone like a casting director to be able to make sure that an actor on set might um, have the right types of positioning or seating surfaces or be able to uh, manage their clothing, you know, when we think about uh, costuming or to be able to, um, when challenges of the job become too much for that actor or it, or it uh, backs up against cap capacity or capabilities, be able to work on coping strategies or to address or train um, the rest of the crew to how to best integrate someone with different abilities into uh, a, a casting set or a photo shoot or what have you. And you both are important integral parts of how we can have success for those with disabilities going forward. But Mindy, you know, we see in print ads, we see on television now, mixed race couples, that's a good push. We're getting farther from where we need to be. But for those with disabilities, those of us in a wheelchair, on crutches, uh, seen differently, what's it going to take to get those directors, producers to use us in those roles in print, mainstream, and everything? You know, it's an excellent question because it is actually one of the reasons why I formed Gamut Management is to really rebrand who people with disabilities are and roles that they can fill. And the notion that just because of the character um, is a mom doesn't mean that she can't be in a wheelchair or have a limb difference. And really understanding that people with disabilities can fill any role and it doesn't have to be written for somebody with a disability. One of my favorite quotes is, if you can't see it, you can't dream it. And I think that's something really important to recreating, you know, who we see in, in our public image. If a movie is being shot, then in the crowd scenes, we should be seeing people in wheelchairs or limb differences or have Down syndrome. It's a part of our actual world and the landscape that we live in. So one of the big factors of what we do at Gamut is really work with casting directors um, or producers to help understand the, the population. Um, again, to Wendy's point is really understanding how to work with them, um, how to navigate the needs of people with disabilities and understand that they are just as good in roles as able-bodied people can be. 
And to that point, I hosted an Easter Seals uh, charity function be before lots and lots of people. We raised over $300,000, but I was probably the first time they've ever seen a host without legs. And mm -hmm. I think at first they were taken aback, but I'm such a goofball, you know how I am. But is the world, and I'll start you off, uh, Dr. Walsh, is the world prepared for people with limb differences and physical differences to be seen and not just be stared at? Absolutely. I, I think it's uh, we want to represent people accurately um, and also have a sense of diversity, equity and inclusion across society. Um, I think uh, Mindy's company is a, a wonderful change maker. Um, I think this is uh, and I think I've said before, it's a it's a social justice issue. It's about equal and fair representation. I mean, that's what this country was was based on you know you're doing it but mindy you're physically making this happen so you're changing lives but your job's not done yet it certainly isn't and um being that, that i have you know made this my profession as well as personally for my son who will be growing up in this world i think uh, you know uh, again the fact that we need to combine our voices um, and be loud um, and be seen. And it's something that, you know, if we have to say it over and over again and really show the power of people with disabilities, not only from the perspective of the fact that it's the largest minority on our planet, but the, the, it's, it's a business opportunity. Um, it provides new revenue streams new audiences for advertisers to advertise to. There's so much that goes into really including people with disabilities into our mainstream worlds and conversations that ultimately benefits everybody, especially for the fact that we are, this is the one minority that every single person on the planet is going to be a part of at some point of their life, whether that is just getting old. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. What a great uh, discussion, Nate, Wendy. Just uh, hopefully we get more people in film. So thank you guys for joining us. So stick with us coming up next. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, television programs that have had disabled actors and also the ones that continue to shine those actors with disabilities. And you're going to want to stick with us because we're going to tell you about the best foreign film, the best documentary, and my favorite, since I'm short, the best short. Stick with us after the break. What is your favorite part about being an OT student? My favorite part is knowing that my occupation one day is going to help so many people. I love collaborating with all my peers and faculty and learning new things every day. I love being an OT student because it's helping me create a future where I can help other people. Hey, my favorite part about being an OT student is getting the chance every single day to learn about all our different practice areas and deciding what I'm going to do one day to help others. My favorite thing about OT is that everything that we do is entirely focused on the specific client that you're working with. And I love how we use their strengths to help them in the areas that they need help with. I love OT. We love OT. I love OT. We love OT. I love OT. I love OT. We love OT. I 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 love OT. All right, thank you, and welcome back to our show. And we are now going to tell you a little bit about some films that always don't get the recognition, just like in the Oscars and the Golden Globes. But I want to tell you about a couple of films we've picked out for the best international films. And again, you vote right now on Zoom, and we'll have those for you at the end of this segment. So let's get started with the international films directed by Shonali Bose. Margarita with a Straw is a 200, 2014 Hindu Indian language uh, drama starring Kakli Cochin as an Indian teenager with cerebral palsy who relocates to America for undergraduate education and comes of age following her complex relationship with a blind girl played by Sayane Gupta. The next one is Notes on Blindness, written and directed by Peter Milliton and James Spinney. It premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2016, and this 
Uh, amb ambitious and groundbreaking film is both affecting and innovative and has been heralded as one of the most essential British documentaries. Since premiering at Sundance in 2016, the film has played in over 20 international and 40 international film festivals and it won the best documentary at the British Independent Film Awards. It was also nominated for three BAFTAs, including best documentary and outstanding British film. And finally, uh, directed by Jane Gull, My Feral Heart is a story of a fiercely independent young man with Down syndrome who's forced to live in a care home after his elderly mother dies. Ultimately, a film of discovery, Luke, played by Stephen Brandon, struggles to settle there, both frustrated at having his wings clipped by its rules and unimpressed by his new housemates. His illicit escapes take him on a world of adventure where he discovers the others who are not so different at the end of the day. And those are our best international films. So again, jump on Zoom, we'll just vote for those and we'll have those at the end of this. Now, the best short. Well, the best short, we have a couple of them. And uh, since I'm short, like I said, I really enjoy these, uh, these films. The best short is The Silent Child. It's a British sign language short film written by and starring Rachel Shenton and directed by Chris Overton. Libby is played by Mae Sly, and she's a four-year-old girl who is profoundly deaf and lives a silent life until a social worker, Joanne, played by Shenton, teaches her how to communicate through sign language. Now, this film won an Oscar for live-action short film at the 90th Academy Awards, and the film's television debut on BBC One was viewed by an audience of 3.5 million people. Next up is Single. It's a relatable anti-romantic comedy that delivers an entertaining and insightful examination of human connection. It also challenges preconceived notions of life with a disability. This film stands out for its fierce authenticity. It features a story of two individuals on a blind date. She has one arm, he has one hand. She is tired of the status quo and she hates the expectation of being with someone like her. Single offers its viewers a catharsis of entertainment as they watch the date progress and the lead actress's antisocial tendencies. And next up is The Complicated Dance to the Wheel of Light. It's set in the Philippines and directed by our Germano Rabita. This film is based on a true story, Michael, who's losing out hope. For him, his life is already a mess. His dreams are not meant for him as a young man with a disability, but as he rolls in his wheelchair, he encounters people who change his view on life. And through those encounters, he learns how to do complicated dances to the wheels of life. And finally, Ku Kanka Stand Tall. Filmmaker and professor Marlene Booth directs the story about the life and legacy of Kanalu, who at 15 years of age became a quadriplegic after a diving accident. The film is Kanula's story of being a big life, and after earning a PhD in Pacific Island history, he was a professor of Hawaiian history at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where he taught the importance of Hawaiian values in present day living. And our final category is of course the documentary, and Zoom voting will continue until we're done reading this. So first up for the best documentary, this feature lake documentary, Code of the Freaks, is a radical reframing of the use of disabled characters in film and an examination of Hollywood's representation of disability through cliches and hollow inspirational narratives, or as some disability activists call, inspirational porn. Director Salome Shasnoff attempts to counter these formatic entertainments with a powerful correct and dares to imagine the cinematic landscape that takes disabled people seriously. Next up is Crip Camp. Crip Camp, sorry about that. A Disability Revolution. Directors Nicole Newman and Jim LeBrecht, winner of the 2020 Sundance Film Festival Audience Award for U.S. Documentary, it's the origin story of the disability rights movement in America. An inclusive camp for handicap in the Catskills as it documents the story of intersectionality of marginalized communities who together ignite their righteous anger to catapult a decades-long fight for civil rights. Crip Camp chronicles the importance of building spaces for people with disabilities to organize. Next up, directed by Michael Barnett, is the story in Becoming Bulletproof. It follows a group of men and women with disabilities who come together and star in a Western firm, taking on a variety of lead roles. The movie illustrates how true equality comes through in the inclusion of those across the spectrum of movie experiences. 
Inclusion shouldn't be a lottery. Those are the words of DJ Savarese. The award-winning film D-E-E-J, or Deej, is the first kind of collaboration between a filmmaker and a non-speaking adult with autism who uses augmentative communication to write poetry and advocate. The film explores the importance of nothing about us without us in the representations of media and decision-making for individuals with disabilities and what it takes to make the goals of inclusion and disability rights. And finally, our last documentary is Normal People Scare Me, a documentary created by Taylor Cross in an effort to illustrate the experience of autism and create more understanding society. This film challenges the social convention of normal with grace, as Taylor himself has autism and captures the insightful interviews that were groundbreaking for his 20, 2006 context. What does autism look like from your perspective? Do you like or not like being autistic? What do you want to be when you grow up and you have you ever been teased? Despite lacking the technical prowess of higher budget film, this creative and honest documentary has been creating meaningful conversations and changes for over a decade. So we'll have those results as you put in your votes for those three categories. But now I wanna bring your guys' attention to what we talked about earlier in the show when we have able-bodied actors playing movie roles for disabled characters. But did you know on television that there have been television shows with disabled characters, but with able-bodied actors in those roles? So let's show you some of those and we'll just kick them off again in no particular order. Uh, Big Bang Theory that just went off the air on CBS. Of course, Sheldon, that great crazy character, he had Asperger's syndrome. The Good Doctor on ABC, a hit show for them. Dr. Murphy, Murphy is, uh, he has Savant syndrome. And that is a great show to watch because it is based on a true story. Of course, Breaking Bad, Walter White Jr. Uh, is played by R.J. Mitty. And he had cerebral palsy that was also played into the role for him. Not usually happening, as we've talked about in television. Glee, of course, a couple of years ago, they had a couple of characters. Artie was in a wheelchair, and Becky was a cheerleader with Down syndrome. If you go way back a couple uh, decades ago, ABC broke ground with Life Goes On, which the lead character was Corky, who, of course, had Down syndrome. The West Wing for you folks of NBC had Joey, who was deaf. If you go way back to the end of the 80s, L.A. Law, Benny was developmentally disabled and was a main character for that show for the entire run of L.A. Law. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them all, and there you have the Facts of Life, which had a character that was groundbreaking for NBC when they had Jerry, who had cerebral palsy that was played by a real-life actress and comedian that was in that role. Now, MASH, of course, you didn't realize that Radar, played by Gary Berghoff, had a disabled hand. He hid that the entire run of the show, and in fact, for every role he's had, he's been able to hide that in some sort of situation, and people today still don't realize that Gary has one hand that is disfigured. Now, there's also a great show on, uh, I think, Netflix called Atypical, where the lead character is a high school student named Sam who goes through the day-to-day -day life with autism. Speechless, of course, was just on ABC. The lead character was played by JJ, who couldn't speak, who communicated with a computer and had severe cerebral palsy. It was a great show, a lot of humor that looked at life for someone who really has a severe disability. And CSI, Dr. Robbins for many years, of course, was played by an actor who actually had a leg amputation. And that's just some of the look of the roles that we talked about for able-bodied actors playing a disability. Now, I wanna give honorable mention to a show that I've watched for a long time called Family Guy, which is, of course, created by Seth MacFarlane. Joe Swanson is a main character on that cartoon show. He lives in a wheelchair, and again, they poke fun of disability, but they showcase it in a way that, yeah, you see what's wrong with our society. So now we have also talked about that there are actual actors with a disability who've played many fine roles, and we're going to take you to that right now. Of course, one of the biggest, and uh, you guys will remember a long time ago, but Marley Martin who is deaf, and she was an Oscar winner and has still had a great success in Hollywood, television, and, of course, an advocate for the deaf community. Uh, Sean Birdie is deaf, and he is an actor that you have seen. Again, roles in society that don't normally go to deaf actors, Sean is getting that. Teal Shearer 
has a spine injury and continues to seek acting roles, modeling roles, and performances. Christopher Reeve, of course, was the actor that played Superman. He was paralyzed in an accident, and he still continued to act and took roles until his untimely death. But, of course, Christopher Reeve and his charity, of course, continue to make waves in the spine of uh, recovery of spinal injury, and those progresses are just monumental. Uh, next, uh, Daryl Mitchell is another actor who has had a spine injury and has overcome that to have acting roles in mainstream performances. We talked about Breaking Bad's R.J. Mitty, and again, an actor who was able to put his cerebral palsy into that role, and he did a fine job. He is now an activ activist and actor and continuing to try to create roles for people with disabilities. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown. Now, stranger things have happened, but Millie Bobby Brown is, oh, i sorry, I jumped one. Dan Aykroyd uh, is, has Asperger's and Tourette syndrome. You remember Dan Aykroyd from Saturday Night Live and all the movies, comedy, and serious that he's had in his lifetime a great actor who has dealt with Asperger's and Tourette syndrome. Now, Millie Bobby Brown, who you see from Stranger Things, and she is hearing impaired, and she has been a role model for the youth as that show has really, really made an impact for her being a role model and being hearing impaired. Jim Carrey, one of the greatest comedians and actors of our time, has ADHD. Let's go way back to the silent era for Charlie Chaplin. One of the greatest silent actors from our time, Charlie Chaplin had Asperger's, but this little misfit was able to have a successful role in television and, or uh, in movies and then later in life as a filmmaker himself. Peter Dinklage, of course, uh, from Game of Thrones, you remember him in the lead role on that, is an actor that has portrayed comedies and movies and all kinds of things, and he has dwarfism. Uh, Michael J. Fox, from his roles in Back to the Future and all of his television shows, of course, we now know he deals with severe Parkinson's, and, my, and Michael continues to try to take roles. He's taken a little fewer acting roles as his Parkinson's has increased, but that hasn't stopped him from being pro active in the treatment to hopefully find a cure for this disease one day. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, of course, you remember him from his roles in the Harry Potter films. He has dyspraxia. Will Smith, one of the greatest actors of our time, can play any role, including Muhammad Ali, really, really has done great as a rapper, singer, performance artist. He has ADHD. The talented Robin Williams had ADHD, Asperger's, bipolar disorder, and of course, tragically at the end of his life, he had Asperger's and he took his own life. And finally, last but not least, hey, it's the Fonz, Henry Winkler, who is, of course, was known for his role on Happy Days and continues to act and direct, has dice gravia and continues to do that, overcoming what he has been through. And that's just a list of some of the names. And again, it really is awesome to have actual actors that have overcome so much to be able to contribute to society in film, television, and production. So it was an honor to be here tonight for these wonderful people that are really out there trying to change the world. So we appreciate your support, your watching us, and the love for all of us at Ability Media, continue to support us, and thank you, and have a good night. Well, as we close our uh, wonderful event tonight, just want to remind everyone that when indig individuals are given space to represent themselves, instead of being represented by others, self-representation erases exploitation and generates a richer, more authentic consideration of those with different abilities than our own. Stigma and stereotyping result when individuals are not afforded the opportunity to represent themselves. Occupational therapy practitioners advocate for authentic representation of disability, so communities research differently, include others differently, practice differently, advocate for the socially just society in the end, and allow each of us to engage in the work of humans being in the world to do our work in a way that we are ongoingly unsubscribing to bias, stigma, and exclusion. And as we turn our um, attention to the next speaker, just want to um, 
let you know that it is none other than Lila Lorenz, a true legend in our profession. Her pioneering exploration of the developmental process, including a focus on cognitive perceptual motor dysfunction, led her to articulate the developmental theory of occupational therapy. You do not want to miss her talk starting at 7 p.m. It's one of Inspire's most inspiring events of 2021. All right, and we can't leave you without, of course, you being on the edge of your seat for the results of our final three categories. So before we go, let's give you the results and the envelope, please. So for the best foreign film, we have Margarita with a Straw, which I hope to have after this presentation. So let's hear it for Margarita with a Straw. Uh, the best documentary, let me look at this one. It is a tie. Hey, so I guess we have to saw the trophy in half, but uh, the best documentary is a tie. It goes to Silent Child and Complicated Dance to the Wheel of Life. And of course, all these movies that we've talked about, you can Google them, you can find them on Hulu, Netflix, or wherever documentaries are seen these days, including HBO. And finally, the last category that we had, our short... And the winner is Crip Camp, A Disability Revolution. So congratulations to our winners. And again, thank all of you tonight for being a part of this amazing uh, evening where we thought outside the box and took a look at film, had a positive discussion discussion about where we want to be and where we hope to end up in the future. And again, we want to thank the American Occupational Therapy Association for letting us showcase this with my friends here at Ability Media. I'm Dave Stevens. Continue to support the disabled world out there and all of us. Thank you and have a great night. <laughs>